when the Holy Spirit is teaching you, He's giving you the words that Jesus wants you to have. The Holy Spirit is a teacher. A teacher in many ways, brethren. He makes us to know what we don't know. and tells you, oh, thus says the Lord. Verse 1. Isaiah 60, verse 1. So, though the theme of the week is Arise and Shine, the theme of the topic of this message is Thy light is come. Tell your neighbor, Thy light is come. The light is come. 
So Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Upon, mm, upon researching and finding out exactly what the word arise means, we have the, the meaning that we all know. It's um, arise from a lying position, arise from a sitting position. Um, even if you're standing, arise from standing to be elevated, to ascend. Um, arise as in to wake up um, from sleep and arise as in a result of something. So you would say, mistakes arises from such and such, uh, that kind of way. But the meaning that I want to bring across today is arise as in to come into being. So arise as in a divine fulfillment of destiny. Arise as in um, to come into notice. And for a long time we've been I've been, at least I can talk for myself. For a long time I've been thinking of arise as one dimensional that you would only say, arise, child, get up, kind of a thing. But in, in studying this one verse for so long, arise, shine, for the light has come, you can um, extract uh, different meanings from it. And in, for, in John 5 verse 8, St. John 5, 5 verse 8, there was a certain man who was sick for 38 years, and he was... And he was saying, when Jesus came and, and spoke to him and said, why are you sitting here for so long? The water, when the water is troubled, you can go into the water and be healed. But the man said that there wasn't anybody to, to put him in the water. He couldn't move himself. And then Jesus said something unto him. He said, rise, take up thy bed and walk um, to that man that had the infirmity for 38 years. So arise as in, let your destiny be fulfilled. Why are you hindering it? Arise as in, get up, let it come to pass. Um, so we're going to look at some verses and we're going to substitute, um, let your destiny be fulfilled for the word arise. Amen? Amen. In St. Luke 17 verse 19, we see another one where Jesus met 10 lepers. And he, he said, go that way, you're healed. And no, he said go, and they were all healed. And as they were walking, um, they were being healed. And only one of them returned and started to glorify God and started thanking him. And then he said something to, to that one in St. Luke 17, verse 19. He said, and he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith had made thee whole. So he said, let your destiny be fulfilled. Go your way, your faith has made you whole. In, in another verse, it said in Acts 9 verse 34, um, with uh, somebody that was sick for eight years, Jesus said to them, um, Peter said unto them, um, Jesus Christ make it thee whole, arise and make thy bed. It's saying, let your destiny be fulfilled. Arise, make your bed, why are you, why are you hindering it? for so long it's not really it's not really the fact that you um it's not really the fact that you are sick but it's the fact that you are not opening the the gateway for your healing to be fulfilled and in luke 7 verse 14 we see another situation where arise is used luke 7 Verse 14. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. Before that, we saw that it was a widow um, with her son that was dead. And she came to Jesus crying. And when I was looking at that, I, I remembered, no, it, it dawned on me that the power of parents who pray, the power of parents who intercede on their children's behalf. So this widow was crying and she cried and said, um, I, my, my son is dead 
And then Jesus said unto him, he came nearer and touched the coffin and the bearer stood still. And he said, young man, I tell you, arise. Young man, let your destiny be fulfilled. Young man, let it come to pass. Essentially is what is being said. And the same thing in Genesis 21 verse 18. When Hagar, um, there was a situation with Hagar and Sarah. And Sarah wanted Hagar's son not to exist anymore. And Abraham brought the son um, into some wilderness area. And Jesus, Hagar was crying and weeping on behalf of her son. So Lord, have mercy, save this one. Don't, don't take him away from me. And the word that she got was, Arise, lift up thy lad and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. Amen? Amen. Let his destiny be fulfilled. Lift him up because I will make him a great nation. And that is the destiny that is to be fulfilled. We see it being used in that sense where a promise follows the word arise. In Ephesians 5 verse 14, he says, Awake you who sleep and arise from the dead and Jesus will shine on you. It's, it's a, a, what, a sequence. So he's saying arise and then the promise that I have for you, it will be. In the, it be fulfilled indeed. And in Genesis 13 verse 17, we see that same thing when the Lord spoke unto Abraham uh, after he was separated from Lot. He said, Arise, walk through the land in its length and in its breadth, for I will give it to you. So that's a promise that God has. Um, he, he said unto Abraham. And it will stand for us. He's telling us, don't hinder it anymore. Let your destiny be fulfilled. And all these things, all these things that I have proposed for you to have, I will give it unto you. Amen? Amen? So that's the word arise. And for instead of arise, we're saying, let your destiny be fulfilled. So as we go forth in the same Isaiah 60, verse 1, it says arise, and then it says shine. And we're going to look at the word shine. Again, that's a kind of word that is somewhat one-dimensional at times, where when you say shine, you're thinking about um, giving off light, sparkling, reflecting light to glisten or so. But I want to look at the word shine in the sense that it means to distinguish oneself in a field or to excel. Shine in, in meaning to excel. Um, in Matthew 5, verse 16, It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So for the word shine, we're going to use um, be distinguished among men. So it's going to say, um, even so, let your light be distinguished before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. In Luke 2 verse uh, 32, it says, a light you will be to shine, or a light you will be to lighten, as the, new, as the King James says. Uh, a light you will be to excel upon the Gentiles, to be distinguished among the Gentiles. In John 1 verse 5, it says the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. It's saying the light excels in the darkness. Amen? Amen. So Isaiah 60 verse 1 is saying, let your destiny be fulfilled. Excel. Amen? Amen? Amen. As we go forth it into that one verse, it gives us the reason or it gives us um, the cause or the influence behind you arising and behind you shining. And does anybody see the source of you shining or the source of you arising? In Isaiah 60 verse 1, it says, Arise shine for thy light is come amen? amen so that's the whole that's our backing how are we going to excel how are we going to be distinguished how is your how will your destiny be fulfilled the only way it can be fulfilled is if the light is come in your life um as christians we we believe that um the light is the light of christ for in saint john 8 verse 12 it says, Then Jesus spake again unto them, saying, 
I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So I started thinking, I said, okay, for the light is come. So does that mean it wasn't there before or what happened? Is, was it here and just automatic, automatically showed up? Or what, what's happening? So then it came to me, it con I concluded that there has always been the light. The light is always there. In, for in James 1 verse 8, the Bible says, draw an eye unto God and he will draw an eye unto you. In Revelation 3 verse 20, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will stop with him and he with me. So the light is always there. It's just for you to open the door and to allow the light to come in unto you. So it's a good feeling when you're a homeowner and somebody's knocking at your door, you know you have the power to get up and open it or not. So they can stand there all they want in the cold. Um, it's, your, it's your decision whether or not you want to let them into your home. If you're, say, using the bathroom um, and somebody's knocking at the door, they really, really, really need to go. You're in there, sometimes I'm in there just, you know, fixing eyebrows and looking at face and whatnot. It's, it's in my power to unlock the door and allow this person to use the washroom. So Jesus is at the door knocking, and it's really up to you whether or not you want the light to come, because you won't be able to say that light is come. So essentially, this verse won't apply to you. You won't be able to arise and shine unless that door is open. Amen? Amen. Um, even more proof for that, you have the law of physics um, that tells you, okay, light cannot tr travel through um, an obscure, what do you call it? Like a, a solid, a solid place or a solid um, element. Um, if you remove that element, you will be able to travel, and it travels in a straight line. So once you open that door, the light will come in, and it will will make a difference. Amen. Amen. In Saul's life, as I am um, Paul, when Saul was changed to Paul on the road to Damascus. In Acts 9, you're just going to look at his life a little bit. Or the end part, the, his conversion. We're going to look up at the process of his conversion a bit. In Acts 9, and for one thing that I've seen in Acts 9 verse 15. But the Lord said unto him, that um, he was talking to Ananias, Ananias, and he said, go that way. But at the end of it, he says, wait, is that it? He says, uh, but the Lord said unto him, go that way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So one thing I saw about Paul is that he was chosen. Amen? Amen. So he was a chosen vessel that God wanted to use. And if you're questioning whether or not you are chosen, in, uh, in 1 Peter 2 verse 9, it tells us that you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. So that's one thing we can see with Paul. And that's one thing we can see to those who God, um, to the light, to those who the light will come unto, are the chosen one. And as children of God, we are chosen. Amen? Amen. And the second thing we see um, is another confirmation that the light is Jesus. In verse 5, in verse 5, when Paul was going about his business, ready to persecute the church. And all of a sudden, this light came. And he said, oh Lord, um, he said, what is, who are thou, Lord? And the Lord said, it is, um, I am Jesus. So that's really um, distinctly telling you that the light is Jesus. Because the light was shining down on him and he says, oh, what, what is going on right now? And the light says, I am Jesus. So that's another confirmation for that, if you are questioning whether or not Paul 
if you're questioning whether or not Paul was seeking the light, because before I said, you have to welcome the light into your life. And for Paul, all of a sudden the light just came around him. He didn't really do it. He was doing the worst of worst, really. Um, persecuting the church. But in verse 11b, when God sent Ananias to go to Paul, when he was sending Ananias, he said, um, and the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. But behold, what is he doing? He's praying. So essentially, he's inviting the light into his life. So when the light shone around him, he couldn't, he couldn't fulfill his purpose at that point in time. So he had to pray and he had to really open up his heart to invite the light into his life to have an effect on him. May we all be in that position where we're praying to God and inviting him into our life in Jesus' name. Amen. And another thing I see is I thought, you know, Paul has been alive for so long. He's been persecuting the church for so long. Why is it at this time that, that um, his destiny was about to be fulfilled? Why is it? This point in time, why couldn't it be a bit earlier before he had killed so many um, <laughs> other Christians? Um, but it says uh, one thing. I said it wasn't. It wasn't the time. It wasn't that time yet. So in this specific time, it was Paul's moment of breakthrough. Because in Ecclesiastic three, verse one, the Bible tells us that to everything there is a season and a time uh, to every purpose under the heavens. So there's a time. Um, God is the author of time. So everything that was, everything that is, and everything that is to come is already ordained by God. The beginning, the, the in-between, and the end of it. So the time is really up to him, but it's, he's always ready to bless. He's already, he is always ready to do good. And Pastor always says, um, the only person hindering your destiny from being fulfilled is really you. So um, we should really ponder on that. And even as we go forth, um, it says it's, it's time for your destiny to be fulfilled. So I believe that I was, that God brought me here upon the altar to tell you that it is time. So turn to your neighbor and say, this is the time. This is the time. So it's time for you to arise. It's time for you to, sh to shine. Amen? Amen. In Isaiah, and in um, the same Isaiah 60 verse 22, it says the Lord will hasten it in his time. So um, as we believe in the word of God, we know that um, once God said it is to be done, it will be done. Amen? Amen. In Acts 9 verse 11, we see something. It's the same part that I just read, but the, the first half of it. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called straight. And then it, it dawned on me that God was telling somebody else to arise too. Amen? Amen. He was telling um, Ananias. Ananias was the one who would go forth to Paul and um, bless him. And, and he had that um, prayed for him and opened his eyes. And then he would see. And then Paul would be on his journey. So, and when God sent him, he said, Behold, go. Because, this, because Paul is praying. And you need to go and do your part. And we've always talked about helpers in our life. We've always talked about those um, ones that have a part to play in the fulfillment of your destiny. And as God told, as God told Ananias to arise, I'm saying that every helper in your life, every helper to fulfill your divine purpose, God will say unto them, arise at this point in time, in Jesus' name. And we can also see that Paul, that Paul was told to arise um, in the beginning and then at the end. He really, he really arose. Um, in verse 6, when the light just came, it told him, um, the light, Jesus said, uh, where is it? Jesus said in verse 6b, it says, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And then in verse 18, again, it says, 
and immediately there fell, that's when he was, um, his eyes were open, and immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. So we see him arising once again. And after he arose that, that um, second time, that's, the truly, that's truly the part where his destiny was, um, yes, it started to unfold, it started to open up, and he started to do, he started to go on, he started to evangelize, and he started to do his ministry. And as we go into the Old Testament, we see that Paul really made an effect, he really made an impact, so his destiny was truly fulfilled. Because even in the end, he was able to say, um, what did he say? I fought a good fight. I finished my course. So I pray that we'll all be able to say that in Jesus' name. Amen. In verse 19, going on, we see, and he had received meat. He was strengthened. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. So after... At that point in time, as he was set um, to have his destiny be fulfilled, he ate. He ate to be strong. Amen? Amen. And, in, and in the words of Jeremiah, who says, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me joy and rejoicing of mine heart. So what should we essentially eat as Christians? We should be eating on the word. That's the only way we're going to be strengthened. That's the only way we're going to be able to go forth and allow our destiny to be fulfilled. Um, and even as he ate the word, he said, the word was unto me, the joy. And the Bible says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. So you really have a, a, a sequence of things happening here. After he ate the word, he ate the word that brings joy and the, the joy that brings strength. Amen? So in our journey, as our destiny has been fulfilled, we need to be really eating that word. And if you really want to look at the process of eating, um, a lot of, some people don't understand, some people aren't aware that digestion, started, digestion starts taking place in the mouth. So the process of mastication, when you're chewing and you're chewing, you're really breaking down that food from its in your mouth and you're really grinding it and you're, you're really savoring it. People that cut and swell, cut and swell the food, they don't really taste it. It just goes down really quickly. So the more you chew, is the more that starch is being broken down in your mouth and you're really tasting the sweetness of the word. So even as we go forth, that food that we need to eat is the word. Amen? Amen. 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 And as we go forth with that, um, we need to be strengthened in that sense as children of God. And we need to believe that when God says, arise, shine for the light has come, we can't arise unless we really eat the word. Because the word is indeed Jesus. Amen? Amen. As we um, see in Mark 5 verse 22, another dynamic story presents itself. Um, with Jairus. So it's Mark, Matthew, Mark. Mark 5, verse 22. Mm -hmm. um, so Jairus um, was requesting that Jesus pay attention to his situation. He was saying, um, Jesus, I have a daughter. Yes, a daughter that needs to be healed, that she may be healed and she shall live. And it went on, went on, and then it says, And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And after that, I see the story of um, the woman with the issue of blood coming in. So then I'm thinking, wait, what's, what's up with Jairus? What happened? Did, is this the end of his story? Um, did Jesus forget about Jairus? Because he requested a healing and then all of a sudden this, this other woman is coming and getting Jesus' attention. And then I kept reading. I was saying, no, this can't be the end of it. I'm quite sure that that wouldn't be the final thing that happens to Jairus. And as we go forth um, into verse...
and to verse 34, 35, 35, Jesus' attention was brought back to Jairus. Amen? Amen? And one thing that I saw really specifically that brought Jesus' attention back to Jairus was it says in verse 35, in Mark 5, verse 35, it says, Why he yet spake, there came from the rule of synagogue's house, certainly which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? And Jesus heard that, and then, oh, Jairus' situation was enlightened once more. So you might have people um, saying things, oh, um, you're graduated from school, you've been serving for a job for so long. Why bother God with this situation? Obviously, it's not meant to be. Um, why are you bothering God with this? People who have been barren for so long have been praying and praying and praying. And somebody would say, really? Uh, why are you bothering God with this situation? Obviously, God doesn't want this to happen, so just leave it alone. I remember, um, and Pastor helped me, because I might forget, um, with David, when David was... Um, he was on a journey, and he was being mocked. And he said, and somebody was defending him, and then he said, um, no, let them mock me, let them mock. God might hear them and have mercy on my situation or favor my situation in that sense. So that's one thing that happened with Jairus and his daughter. God, Jesus heard people talking, people saying that, no, it can't happen. And then Jesus went back to his situation. So the Lord will remember you in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord won't leave you. This isn't the end of your situation. Amen. There is um, a glorious end coming. Your destiny is, is being fulfilled. Amen? Yes. Um, as we go forth into that same verse, we see in verse 42, in that same chapter, we see in verse 42, it says, and straightway, after Jesus went, he said, in 41, let's go to 41 first. It says, and he took the damsel by the hand. The Lord will take you by your hand, in Jesus' name. Amen. And as he took the damsel by the hand, he said unto her, Talitha kumi, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, let your destiny be fulfilled. Amen? Amen. And straightway, the damsel arose, and she walked. For she was of the age of 12 years old, and they were astonished with great astonishment. When God visits your situation and your destiny is being fulfilled, people will astonish with great astonishment in Jesus' name. And then he charged her straightly and he said, No man should know it. And then he commanded that saying uh, that something should be given to her to eat. Amen? Amen? And we go back to that same thing as eating. Eating the word of God so you may be strengthened. Because God um, God said into her life, he proposed into her life, let your destiny be fulfilled. And then he said, give her something to eat so that she may be strengthened to go into this fulfillment of her destiny. Amen? Amen. Um, in Philippians 1 verse 20, it says, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now as Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be life or it be death. And we go back to that eating the word. When you eat the word, God will be magnified in your body. Amen. And in John 1, 1, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So when you're feeding on the word, you can say, like Paul said, that let Christ be magnified in my body. And that's the light that will be magnified in your body, so you won't be able to go unnoticed in this, in this world. People will see and say, oh, there is something truly special about this individual. i like to know this story. And then you'll be able to share your testimony that God said to you one day. He said, arise. And he said, shine. He said, let your destiny be fulfilled. And as God has spoken, it will show, so shall it be in your life, in Jesus' name. Amen. And, um, in chemically, spiritually speaking, or spirit chemically speaking, um, every f the everything that lives is made up of um, the basic chemical compound. People that know chemistry know that um, even though we're human beings and, and animals and animal chicken is a chicken, when you break it down, really break it down to the chemical components, 
we're all made up of the same chemical components. And if you feed your spirit with the word, you will be made up of that word in that sense. So it will be the primary component of your life, of your spiritual being, and that's what we want. If you're baking a cake, you put in flour and you put in everything that will make the cake a cake. You can't put stones and dirt and water in and expect it to become a cake. You can't do that, it's not really, it's not feasible. So as human beings, we need to make the word be the compounds of our spiritual being. Amen? Amen? So that God's destiny will be manifested in our lives. Amen. So that this word will be, will come alive into us. The word that says in Isaiah 60 verse 5, it says, The abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Amen. So that's the word that we want to be materializing in ourselves. In that same Amen. Isaiah 60 verse 11, it says, Therefore, Thy gates shall be open continually. Amen. They shall not be shut day or night. Amen. And it's that same Isaiah 15. That's the word that we want to really be embedded into our being. It says in verse 15, I will make thee an eternal excellency, Amen. a joy of many generations. Amen. In verse 17, it says, For brass I will bring gold, Amen. and for iron I will bring silver. Amen. And in the same verse 19, it says, The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. Amen. But the Lord Hallelujah. shall be unto thee an everlasting light, Amen. and thy God thy glory. Amen. And in that, that's the word that we want to be our component. That's the word we want to be the, the primary elements of our life. In that same Isaiah verse 60 it says, um, in that same Isaiah chapter 60 verse 20 it says, Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall the moon draw withdraw itself, for the Lord shall be thy everlasting light, and the days of thy mourning shall be ended. Amen? Amen. Amen. Those are the words that we want to be in our life. And that's the only way um, we're going to be able to arise. And that's the only way we're going to be able to shine. In Philippians 2 verse 15, it says that he may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. And that's, we're going to shine with the word, amen? amen? So we'll shine and people will see the goodness of God in our life, in Jesus' name. Amen. When people see you arising and shining, when they see you excelling, they'll come and they'll say, um, this is truly a star, because you know that as a son, um, it, it said in um, astrology that um, the sun is a big star, it's made up of stars, it's, um, it's just a big uh, star. And in St. Matthew 2 verse 2, when the wise men saw the star, they said, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen the star in the east and we are come to worship him. So when people see you, a star, son of the sun, son of the sun, Jesus, they will say, For we have seen... We have seen the star, we have seen his children, and we are come, we are come to worship. And that's what we want people to be saying concerning our lives. But there is a huge but, and the light only, and as I mentioned before, the light only enters where it is welcome, where the door is open. So as Isaiah 55 verse 6 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. So if you want this prophecy um, to be in your life, if you want your destiny to truly be fulfilled, surely the light has to come. And the light only comes if you allow it in. So as Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for the light is come. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just bow our heads. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. We believe that the message you have heard has transformed and inspired you. The only way we can earn God's respect is to live our lives according to the scriptures. We pray that God will help our inabilities as we work towards perfection. In Jesus' name, amen. For prayer and counseling, please contact us. We are... The Redeemed Christian Church of God Christ Chapel and we are located at Unit 7 
250 Bayview Drive, Barry, Ontario, L4N 4Y8. Our telephone number is 705-737-9216 or 416-579-4526. You can also locate us on our website at www.rccgbaby.org. Jesus is Lord. Amen.